Hello, I'm Huey Poplock. I'm going to be talking about Windows Tips. It's an app from Microsoft that's part of Windows 10. The Tips app in Windows 10 is full of short and sweet tips that help you get the most out of Windows 10. Each tip has a button on it so you can try it out with a single click or you can learn more. All you need is a couple of minutes to go through a set of tips and new tips are added every so often. And to get the latest tips, make sure your Windows uh, is connected to the internet. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. You come down to the search box and type in tips. And it will be up here. You just click on it and it'll open. So let's make it just a little bit larger. So we can get more on the screen and you can check out what the latest tips are. You can explore what's new, but there's a list of several topics, many topics. Each one contains more tips and they're called cards. We're going to take a look at what's new today and we may not even get through all of them. And this will be a continuing ongoing project from me. So let's take a look. So let's explore what's new. By clicking this, we get card one of 12. What's your favorite mode? Make your app and app tiles stand out with light or dark mode. I prefer the light mode, but if you want to change yours to the dark mode, it's very easy to do. One, we can just click on this and it'll take us right to where we want to go or you can go to Let's do it. Let's go to settings, personalization, and colors. And right here, you can choose your color light or dark. If you change it to dark, it will look like this. Let's leave it there for a moment and take a look. And so you'll, so if we open up the menu, it's going to be in dark mode. And so will most of your menus and other items. For instance, let's so let's open up our file explorer. It's in dark mode. Let's go back to the settings. We're going to change it back to light. It changes here. And it also has changed our file manager. Let's go to the next card. Keep tabs on your website tabs. When you're on a frequently used website and have a lot of tabs open, pin that site to your taskbar. Then just hover over the pin to see a preview of the open tabs. To pin the website to the taskbar in Microsoft Edge, go to Settings, More, then More Tools, and pin to taskbar. Let's do it. I'm going to, I already have my Microsoft Edge open. I have three tabs. You might, I've had as many as 20 or 30 open at a time. But let's say this particular one I want to have and be able to, to see. What I can do is I go to More Tools and pin to Taskbar. You give it a name. I'll go ahead and just leave the one that was there. And it pins it down here. As I move my, hover my mouse over it, I will see that page. And even if I go to a different page, or a different tab, I should say, which is a different page, I can come down and hover over that one and see if it changed any or something is different. The card leads me to believe that it's going to show all of the tabs. It doesn't do that. And so I probably would never use this, but it is nice to the fact that if I close my edge, since I pinned it to the taskbar, I can click that. It will open up my edge 
and it will be on the page that I wanted. So if you go to the same website frequently, you can set that up as a link in your taskbar to go to it very quickly. The next item in what's new is quickly jump between open web pages with Alt plus Tab. Select the Alt key and the and tap the tab to toggle through the apps and items you have open, including website tabs in Microsoft Edge. I've shown this uh, in other recordings recently, but let's take a look. I'm going to click Alt Tab on my keyboard. And as I do, it, 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 when I let go of the keys, it goes away. So I hold the Alt key down, hit the Tab button. And then hit the tab button again and keep hitting it you'll see the white square box around it changes so i can go to any item in the order that they are on there and i can so i can have a lot of windows open and easily find what i want and go back to it the fourth card in the what's new group of tips is have magnifier read text aloud magnifier the screen magnifying feature that comes with windows 10 can also read text aloud to use it you turn on the magnifier and settings by pressing the windows logo key plus the plus sign uh, and then you select read from here and then use your mouse pointer to select where you want it to begin to do that, let's go ahead. I'm going to minimize this just to make things on the screen look a little bit better because I have two screens to work with. And I hold the Windows key down and the plus key. That will turn on the magnifier menu. Now I'm going to bring over a notepad text document, which is the my introduction to what we're doing with the tips app. I am going to come here where it says read from here. I am going to click that. I'm going to come over here and HTML content about the tips app Windows 10. The tips app in Windows 10 is full of short and sweet tips that help you get the most out of Windows 10. Well, that's very nice, but I didn't magnify anything. You've got to magnify from here. We'll make that 200. We'll bring this over just a just a hair so we can get everything here I'm going to click from here start here HTML content about the tips app Windows 10 the tips app in Windows 10 is full of short and sweet tips that help you get the most out of Windows 10 each tip has a button in it so you can try it out with a single click or learn more all you need is and you can see there uh, let me let's see if I can come over here Get this back down to 100%. We'll move this over back over here. And that's all there is to it, really. You can magnify plus and minus uh, as much as you want. Bring it up, bring it down. But you can also do the text reading within it. The next card in what's new is keep an editor handy. On the home tab, choose editor. To focus on the issues you care most about, click a correction or refinement type like grammar or clarity. Then use the arrows on the suggestion card to step through each issue. Now this is in Word, but the editor works in several programs. And let's uh, take a look. I have an article that I copy and pasted that has some errors in it. I did it in a document from Word and I did it in a Gmail. Let's see how the Microsoft editor handles that. First in Word and we're using the online version of Word and you'll see up here it says editor and you'll see also that there are several underlines and different types of underlines. So let's take a look at the editor and it'll tell us we have an editor score of 59%. There's one spelling error and three gra grammatical errors. And let's take a look at what they might be. So if we move my mouse, mouse over where it says weren't, it says check to view suggestions. So let's go ahead and do that. 
you might want to change it to were not instead of weren't. Okay, what about the word was? Click there for it should be were. Opportunities. It's so you can see that you can and you can make this changing changes right here just by clicking and so on through this document. Now in a Gmail, it works much the same way. I have a new message for Gmail with the same information, the same paragraph, and you'll see there's a was here. If I click it, it says were, so I can change that. And the opportunities is spelled wrong. It spells it right. I do it, change it here, and so on through these. So the editor works in more than just Microsoft products, and it works in more than just a, a word processor. It'll even work in most emails as well. Card number six in what's new is edit in multiple languages. To check text in another language, select the text and go to Review, Editor, Set Proofing Language, and then choose your language, and that will be in Word. Editor doesn't check for the same issues in every language. When it's checking for more than one language, Editor lets you know which refinements are available for which languages. Since I don't do multiple languages, I can't show you this. Next few cards deal with some templates that are available from Microsoft. Family Safety and Emergency Prep. Quickly create emergency instructions, contact lists, plans, and checklists so you can keep calm and have peace of mind. All you have to do is click this button here, and you will see that there are Word and PowerPoint templates for all kinds of emergency contact lists and things to do in emergencies and maintenance and task lists and so on. The next card is fun activities for you and your kids. Puzzles, coloring books, infographics, and more. Enjoy these free activities with your children, family, or friends. And again, it's a bunch of tem templates in PowerPoint, in Word, Excel. And let's take a look at some of these. There's a Sudoku game, geography, learn to draw, coloring books, and so on. Some infographics that you can deal with and play around with within PowerPoint. And several word, paint by numbers, all kinds of coloring for the kids. The next card is Family Tree Generator. Browse family history templates. Record your family's past, present, and future with ancestry charts, photo albums, and newsletters. Here's what some of those are. These, again, are templates for Excel and PowerPoint and Word. You can have newsletters, family newsletters, family photo albums, some charts, family tree charts, and so on. Where the templates are already done, all you have to do is put in your own personal information. Browse learning templates, top templates for home learners, multiplication tables, reading log, and so on. As you can see, some are in Word, some are PowerPoint. Beneath the surface, Earth's history, spread of life, PowerPoint. These are all templates that you can use for free uh, from Microsoft that are available for you. The next card is add an emoji from your keyboard. Express yourself however and wherever you want. Press the Windows logo and the period. We'll do that right now. 
and that will bring up your emojis. And you will see that there are just all kinds of types and you can view them here. So each one of these is a grouping and there's just tons and tons of them available for you. And there's more shortcuts for you. You can click on that and it'll give you some, some more things to look at. Some of you may not use emojis, but now it might be a good chance to take a look at some. Some are fun to use. The final card under what's new is take a snip of what's on your screen, and that's using the snip and sketch. And as an example, what we'll do here is we'll just click here. We click on new. You take your mouse and you just drag it, grab something that you want from the screen. Now I have a program called Snagit that's turned on that it goes to the editor, but normally it just puts it in the clipboard and then you can drop it and paste it into uh, either an email or a Word document uh, or a WordPad document and so on. So those are the cards for what's new. That's it for Windows Tips app, part one, what's new. And now on to part two, getting started with Windows 10. We're going to use the tips under the topic of get started with Windows 10. There are 10 tips. Let's get started. First card is the ultimate search box. Type an app or file name, email subject, or favorite celebrity into the search box on the taskbar, the bottom bar on your screen, and you'll get the results on your PC, like apps, files, and messages, and the web. Use the tabs at the top to narrow your search Learn more about searching in Windows, and there's a link there. So let's try it now. It comes up. We're going to type in here for the search. We're going to type in CFCS. And there is a spreadsheet that I have, and I could bring that up. I can search the web. There are documents. There's all kinds of folders. There's all kinds of information. I can narrow it down from here. Let's go to card number two. Customize your start menu. Pin apps to the start menu for quick access to what's important. Select the start Windows key uh, and press and hold or right click the app you want to pin. Pin to start. You can also unpin apps that you don't need. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Here's your start menu. If you want to right mouse click here, pin to start, and it's now here, and you can move it around. And you can unpin another item. Let's say, uh, I don't know that I have anything on here to, that I don't want to have. So let's take another uh, here, pin to start. And now if we don't want it, we click here and we can unpin it from the start and it goes away. It hasn't deleted it. It's just turned it off of the start menu. Now, let's click on Open the Start Settings. Here are the Start Settings. You'll see that some are turned on, some are turned off. Let's look at what they are. First, Show More Tiles on Start. And that's turned off. So if it's, it looks like this, if we turn it on, Probably not going to look much different. 
but we'll leave it off. Show app list in the start menu. What that means is the app list here. So let's turn that off to see what it does. Now you don't have that list. I prefer it, so I'm going to turn it back on. So you can see here that it's there. Show recently added apps. That's turned off. If we turn that on, when we look at our start menu, we will now see at the top here, recently added. So if you add programs on a regular basis or applications on a regular basis, you want to make sure uh, you can find them easily. You would put them there. I don't leave it on. Show the most used apps. If you're using the same apps over and over again, you may want to turn that on and it'll be right up here as well. Now, what if I want both of those? We'll turn both of those on and both will be there. There's the most, there's the recently added and the most used and then alphabetical, all of the apps that are on your computer. So I am going to turn those two off. Show suggestions occasionally and start. I don't use that. I'm not sure what it will show you. Uh, use the start full screen. If we turn that on, when you hit the start button, it'll be the full screen. Again, I don't like that. I want it just a part of the menu or part of the screen, so I don't do it full screen. Now, one thing you can do is you can resize this to make it bigger or smaller and then and then scroll it if you wish. So I have everything showing without being full screen. The last item here is show recently opened items in jump lists on the start or task bar in File Explorer and Quick Access. Turn that on. Be honest with you, I am not sure what that does. But it does have to do in your File Explorer. But choose which folders appear on the start. Now, what do we mean by that? Notice here that we have documents, pictures, settings, power, and then my account. I, if I choose what's there, I can turn on some others. I could turn on File Explorer. I could have the downloads. And if I wanted the personal folder is everything is under my username. But we'll just keep those. And now when we click this, you'll see that we have documents. Then we also have the downloads, pictures, File Explorer, settings, and power. So they're right here. And if I wanted to remove any of those, I can do that as well. Uh, I don't need the pictures and I don't need the downloads there. And I don't even do the documents there. So I just want the settings file explorer. And so now when I do it, it's fairly clean. It's just file explorer settings and power. Let's go to the next card. Card number three, organize start with folders. You can have folders in your start menu. Let's take a look at what that means. I've got OneNote and Microsoft Edge here. If I want to make a folder with those two, I just bring this one over and drop it on that. And now it's created a folder and we'll call this uh, test. Now, if I move test back up here, you will see that the two are in a folder. I could take all of the Microsoft Office items and put them in one folder and then click on one of them through the folder. You can also reverse that by clicking the folder. It puts it down here. I can then slide this one over here. Clicked it once. 
then bring it up and the folder goes away. The next card is finding settings quickly. Often we go to the settings panel or the settings app and we don't know where to find what we're looking for. Well, there's a great search within the settings program. When you open your settings, you'll see there's a box right here that takes you right to it. And all you have to do is type in something that you're looking for. So if we're looking for something with the mouse, there's the mouse settings, change your mouse settings, change your mouse pointer size, change how far you scroll with the mouse wheel and the ease of access mouse settings. And then you can show all of the results. So whatever you're looking for. So if you're looking for the mouse settings, you click there, takes you right to it. The next card is sign in with one account on all of your devices. Select the start button, settings and accounts, and then email and accounts, and then select add a Microsoft account to sign in. On each of your devices, sign in with that account. I don't use this, so I can't demonstrate it. Let's go to the next card. Quickly change settings in the Actions Center. First of all, if you're not using the Action Center, you should be. Let's open it by clicking here, and then I'll show you how to do it on the screen. In your Action Center, first of all, you have several items here. They may be different on yours. You can collapse those so you only see the top few. And if you expand it, you see more. And you can activate, turn on things, and do things in this Action Center. You can set it up and add things to it and edit actions as well. At the top are where the notifications are and currently I have no notifications. Now I am going to close this to get to quickly to the action center. Just come down here and click that. And that's the notification button and it brings it up. As soon as you click outside of it, it goes away. Card number seven, get apps for your PC. And a good way to do that, besides going to websites and so on, would be to go to the Start button and then go to the Microsoft Store. When you click on it, there is the Microsoft Store. You can search, you can find games and uh, programs. You can search with titles, uh, find something that you want when you find it. You can see if it's if you already have it on your computer to say you owned it, you already own it, or if it's free, if it's installed, and then if there's a cost, it'll tell you how much. And you can find all of the programs that Microsoft has put into their Microsoft Store for you to download and install. This is the safest way to install a program on Windows. The next card is keep your PC up to date. Get the latest features and security updates. You select the start settings, update and security, windows update, and check for updates. So let's go to settings. We can click here or we'll come down to here and go to settings. And then we have to slide down a little bit because my window isn't quite big enough. And it says update and security. And then you go to Windows Update. Now we're there. I don't want to click Check for Updates because if there is one, it's going to try to update and we may be here for hours. So I don't want to do that. So uh, uh, I am not going to click, but I do want to show you some things. And you can also view some optional updates. But notice here, there are some choices you have. You can pause updates for seven days. So if you're in the process of doing something, working on a special uh, project that you don't want to be interrupted on, you can uh, pause so no updates are done. You can change active hours. You can have certain active hours. Now, the updates may go on in the background, but what's going to happen is it's not going to reboot on you in the middle of something during those hours. Now you can also update, you can view your update history and some advanced options. Let's look at the view update history. 
because you should check this every once in a while and you'll see that the feature updates is when the when the big two up the two updates a year are it will tell you that you've done them and that it was successfully installed i did mine for the uh, 20h2 i did mine on october 22nd and then you can also click and see what's new in the update and then there are quality updates there happens to be 14 of them and you'll see that they'll say successfully installed and give you the dates if one didn't install properly you will see it will say it's unsuccessful you may have to go back and try it again or you may see above it where it was successful where it did try again and it and it did get installed so you want to check that every once in a while and make sure there wasn't an update that just didn't get installed there are also driver updates definition updates for your security and some other updates and it tells you how many are there and if you look at the driver updates you'll see uh, I put one in for my uh, mouse and for my camera uh, one for the printer uh, got updated uh, at the end of November and then under the definition updates you can see that there were definite uh, updates to the Windows Defender and uh, there was one on the 9th of December there was one on in November so it's about once a month that they get updated so that's your Windows update and make sure you do check and make sure you do keep your computer up to date. The last two cards in this group deal with helping you learn Windows. The first is learn from the experts. Windows experts can help you get the best out of Windows. Visit the Windows community to learn about how to be more productive with Windows. And if you want to learn more, you just click here it will then take you to a website they have a newsletter but they have many many videos to help you tutorials look at the number of pages there are with this with three six twelve with a dozen on each page and let's just click another page just to show you lots of good help that you may not have realized that's available for you. And finally, our last card is see the quick start guide to Windows 10. All in one guide for the fast and easy tips to help you set up, personalize and protect your Windows 10 device just click get started it again opens up a website you'll see here download the quick start guide to windows 10 let's go ahead and do that there it is and it is a pdf and it is all kinds of information to help you and i encourage you to go ahead and download it you might even want to print it and have it as your own scrolling all the way to the bottom you'll see that it's 32 pages long make sure you download it take a look at it print it and that's it for the 10 cards that are in the Windows 10 getting started tips I'm Huey Poplock, and thanks for joining. But wait, there's more. I've got some extras here. Besides the, uh, uh, from Microsoft, uh, having the online, they, uh, there's also a book and it's in PDF form, EPUB form, and several other forms. It's about $10. And it's Windows 10 Field Guide. And it's a full-length ebook 
about the latest version of Microsoft Windows aimed at those users who will upgrade from either Windows 7, Windows 8.1, or acquire Windows 10 with a new PC. The latest update was done on the 7th of this month. They update it on a regular basis, and that's part of your cost. And the cost is $9.99. It's uh, There is the address where you can go look at it. You can uh, get a sample uh, of one of the chapters and look at the uh, the table of contents. It's about 500 pages long. You're probably not going to print it, but it is a great reference guide to Windows 10. And because they're up, updating it all of the time, it's it's pretty much up to date and, and to the latest versions of Windows. So I highly recommend that. Uh, I bought it uh, several years ago, and it keeps updating uh, every few months, sometimes more often when there's things that change within the Windows 10. Now, I do want to remind you that uh, uh, Bill said at the beginning that they're tech for seniors. Uh, Ron Brown, who you may have uh, watched his video or his uh, presentation just prior to mine, and myself, we are co-hosts every Monday from 11.30 to, uh, uh, to 1.15 Eastern time. And we also, uh, because we are on Zoom and we've been filling up the room, we're streaming on YouTube for, uh, for those either who don't like uh, Zoom or who would like to watch it on YouTube who can't get in because it's full. It features resident experts, Bob G, who you're going to see next, Ray Baxter and Dewey Kloos. STUG members are invited, well, all members of all user groups are invited to attend our action-packed hour. Typical topics are Windows 10, Apple computers, Chromebooks, cutting the cord, security, and so on. And for more information, go to techforsenior, no S at the end, dot com to see the website. Also on the second Sunday of every month, I host the Central Florida Computer Society Windows Special Interest Group. And if you sign up for my newsletter, you will get a reminder each month and a list of what the topics are for that month and for the previous month. And on my website, you'll be able to uh, look at videos of prior meetings. Also on the third Thursday, which will be this coming Thursday, Ron and I also have a learning Chromebooks session. And if you go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash learning Chromebooks, you will get to the registration form, fill it out, and you will be on the list. You will immediately get a link to the meeting and you're welcome to join us. So at this point, I can go ahead and answer any questions about what I've been talking about or whatever you wanna ask about. Thanks, Ron. I mean, I'm no, sorry. Thanks, Huey. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, but I'd like to thank Huey for taking the time out of his busy schedule to present uh, at our Winter VTC. So I have a couple questions here that is in the uh, chat. Uh, the first one, can you change the voice in Windows Narrator? I am not sure if you can change. Uh, you can't from within the... Uh, window that I showed you where you were doing it with the magnifier. There may be in the settings, you might be able to change it. And there are other uh, ways in which you can, uh, other apps that use a, the similar uh, voices that you can change them. So I'm not totally sure if you can do it right there, but I think you can within the settings of Windows. And this is probably a related question. I don't see my magnifier to have the verbal function. They may not have set it up in settings to, to be able to use it. And so you might have to go into settings and do some searching for, uh, for that, or you may not have a microphone that's built in. Uh, there could be a number of reasons why you might not see it. And I'm not sure, maybe, and it may be a home versus the pro version of Windows. I am not sure. That's a, a guess. I, I do use the pro version, so I had not stopped to think that that may not be available in the home version, but that may be a possibility as well. With Snip and Sketch, it goes to the wrong email client. How do I change this to the preferred email? You probably have to go into your Windows settings 
and then go to your defaults and go to default apps and find your default email program. That should work. Sometimes Microsoft just wants it to go to one of their programs, but uh, I think you can set it up within the default apps. Huey, the next question has to do with the home screen. And she says that uh, it's uh, showing three groupings. How can I change it to how yours was looking? Were you using the two column or three column? I can't remember. I, you know, it, it was two column, I believe, but you can expand it. You can move things around. You can right mouse click on boxes, change the size of them. Uh, it's quite versatile in how you want it to look. Uh, I try to stay as generic as I can. So when I do a presentation, you're going to see it like uh, it might look on your computer, but if you've gone in and changed it or somebody else has set it up for you, it could look different. And uh, But you can experiment with it and play around with it, but right click on any of the boxes and you can see uh, there'll be more and sometimes they resize. You can have them big boxes, little boxes and, and so on. And you can uh, slide them around, move them around. And as you noticed, uh, you can even make folders out of some and give the folder a name. Uh, so there's a, 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 it's very versatile. Yes. And in settings, if you go to um, the tab that says start, there are some things you can do, um, some customization there. And I think it also will allow you to change the number of columns that you have on the start menu. Yeah. The next one is you might, uh, as a comment and kind of a question, you might mention that a right click of the Windows logo on the left end of the taskbar yields a number of shortcuts to various frequently loaded items. That's correct. And, that's, and that is a good point. I did not mention that because it wasn't part of the tips that I was demonstrating that tips app. But yeah, if you uh, right mouse click on the Windows logo, uh, you, you should see a whole bunch of things, including your task manager uh, and, and several other things that you might use uh, and, and sometimes can't find easily and they're gonna be right there. I do not see the same tips on my PC. Is it different for each person? Or I have not heard of that, so I am not sure. It could be, and it may be the difference in the versions, and it may be a difference in the versions of Windows. You may not have the most up-to-date. Uh, I have the, the 20H2, which is the second half of 2020, uh, and there's going to be a new one out in the next month or two. You should see an up, another update. But it, it may be because you're in a different version, or you may have a home version versus the pro version. Now, I am not sure. Uh, uh, Dave Gerber from the Sarasota Technology User Group has a forum for Windows tips. And he talked about that tip app. I had not seen it before. I went in and looked at it. And so I started putting together the, uh, the videos uh, and the presentation that you just witnessed. Are there any other questions? How do I sign up for the newsletter? It went by fast. I think they're referring to the uh, Tech for Seniors newsletter. Go to techforsenior.com. And you'll be able to do it there. And then also go to this address Huey.net, you don't even need the WinSig, it'll take you, uh, there'll be a form on the right-hand side of the website and you can fill in for my newsletter for the Windows SIG. How do I add the editor to Word? Should be part of it. Just make sure that you're in full version uh, and it will be, I'm trying to think which tab it shows up on. Um, I. I'm trying to look at the the uh, bar at the top off my memory, and I can't remember which one it, where you find it, but it's in one of them. Um, and there again, it might be a, a um, product of the version of Word that you have. Yeah, uh, and if you use the online version, it's there. And not only that, is if you're a 365 user, 
There's also under the editor is a transcribed button or transcribe button. And that transcribe, you can take, uh, say, a Zoom audio recording and the online word and take the transcription and import it. And it will all be, it'll take, turn it all into text 